Hi lovelies! After a long break, I am officially back on YouTube. There have been so many changes in my life and now on my channel. I'm just going to catch you up. We have been living in Singapore for the last four years and now we are back in Malaysia, my country of origin, and I'm loving every minute of it. Singapore is basically a very tiny island, so all the apartments there, the houses there, tend to be very small. Whereas in Malaysia, we have ample space and the houses are here are really big. And for those of you who are surprised that an apartment is a family way of life here, let me just tell you that safety is a very big concern here. So living in an apartment not only gives you the safety, but at the same time, you can just go downstairs to your resort style pool. I would like to take you on this journey of moving in and settling in. And the first thing we did when we moved in was, of course, we did up our bedrooms, our bathrooms, and then our kitchen and our pantry. Now, the kitchen is almost done, but the pantry is now open for business. So let's take a look. Over the years, I have been using more and more organization solutions from IKEA, so it is really no surprise that this time I have opted for an almost 100% IKEA pantry. This shelving unit is the Elgot system from IKEA, of course IKEA, and I really like how flexible it is because you can get as many shelves as you need, you can get pull-out baskets, you can get boxes, you can get a combo that suits your needs. Now these back rods come in two lengths and the one I have installed is the longer option. On these I have mounted three columns of shelves. Now these two are 60 cm and then this one here is 80 cm. This creates a sort of a wall to wall floor to ceiling storage which is perfect for the needs of my family. If you have a smaller pantry you can still use this system by swapping out the shelving combinations. IKEA also has a 40 cm option for smaller areas. You can place the shelving at different heights and levels but I prefer to have them mainly in straight rows because I think it's visually just more appealing and uniform. Okay, so this bottom section stores the hardier items, you might say. On the very left, I have kept some of the appliances that we use frequently. I also have my cupcake maker, equity press and my toaster oven. These are easy to get to at this level, so it is really functional to use them and put them back. Next to that, I have these two pull-out baskets. The shelves hold the brackets firmly and the baskets get wedged securely between the shelves. So there are a few basket options that you can opt for, but I am using the perforated mesh baskets because they are just perfect for onions, garlic and ginger. And then I also use it for my potatoes and sweet potatoes. The drawer capacity here is really large and the perforation creates ventilation so I can stock up on these groceries without having to worry about the stuff going bad. Right above that, as you can see, I have another shelf just to sort of create an enclosure above the baskets. Here I have used some IKEA containers for our canned drinks. Okay, it's just Coke actually, which is my poison of choice, but, um, but it's great because it fits 20 cans. And that means I can buy a whole case at one go. And it's really accessible once again and easy to get, you know, you just slide it out, grab a can or two. And next to it, I have a closed container filled with my stock of spices. Having it here makes it really convenient for me to refill my spice jars, which I keep in a drawer in my kitchen. And on the very right here sit two bins where we store our rice. We have white rice and brown basmati. These are pretty integral to our diet, so I buy them in bulk. I was so happy when I realized how perfectly these containers fit on the shelf and again how convenient it is to cook with because right across from here on the adjacent wall you'll see I have my rice cooker set up so it's really easy to sort of get to it and cook it just before mealtime. I have just put a small cart that I bought which fits perfectly in this uh, little alcove here. The rice cooker sits on top and there is also some slow cooker functions as well in that. In this drawer here, I just keep my serving spoons and this stand to place a used spoon. Down here, we have a couple more open drawer concepts. 
I just keep some of the fruit that we buy from the farmer's market every Sunday. It ripens over the week, which is basically when they're ready to be popped into the refrigerator. On the side, I have some of my favorite recipe books, which are just really easy to access from here, in case I need to reference something while I'm cooking. Here I'm using different types of jars for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I already have these jars at home from my earlier pantry setup, so I really don't want to waste these perfectly good bottles. And secondly, I personally find that it is easier to distinguish the different contents. These ones, I think, are called forwas from IKEA. They hold my lentils, and these droppers are meant for sundries. If you have fewer items you stock in your pantry, then maybe just one type of container would work for you. And, and of course, if you're buying new ones, then you would probably want to buy all the same type. Frankly, since my jars are all glass and have silver lids, they kind of match really well and look quite cohesive side by side. The third type of jars are probably the only one storage solution that is not from IKEA. These are the Balls Mason jars and they hold my different types of flowers, grains and breadcrumbs. I have been loving these jars since I got them a few years ago. They have moved house with me numerous times and they are still just as durable as when I started. I have just used a block of wood under the back row to raise the jars so I can see the labels clearly. You don't have to finish these because they're just going to be hidden behind the front row. And speaking of these labels, I have just attached them with some twine so I can easily take them off when I need to wash the jars. I find that they're a little bit more elegant than the chalkboard labels and honestly they are so simple to make. You can just reuse them as many times as you need. And if you want to see how I made these, be sure to leave me a comment below and I will be happy to post a video on how I made them. Now above the jars I have my pastas. I have a couple more of these dropper jars in different sizes. We have our spaghetti in the tall one, um, shorter pasta in the bigger ones and single serving portions in the jars in front. Alongside with that I have my seasonings and some ready to heat and eat packs of creamy pasta and mac and cheese in this container. This keeps it organized and presentable especially because they are different sizes and different shapes. Over here I have the Variera tray labeled sauces and in that I have all my sauces, dressings and condiments neatly arranged. A great tip would be that you will save a lot of time by having one space for all the like items. I hate spending time searching for items or worse yet forgetting that I have them. So I've just put them in order of height. I can clearly see and get to everything without fuss. Now at this end I have all my canned goods. You can see I use a multi-leveled organizer to ensure that I can see what's at the back. I know some people like to put their cans in sealed baskets but my tip is to keep it all out on display so you can see exactly what you have on hand and nothing gets forgotten about. Another important tip here is to schedule decluttering your pantry. You should do this seasonally and so if you notice something that's reaching the end of its shelf life, it's a good idea to sit it down in front and add it to the menu for the week. And of course, if it's expired, out it goes. Now above that, which is really quite high for short stuff like me, I have two baskets of instant noodles. Um, because it is high up, it is convenient to have a non-breakable bin so that I can just pull it down, select the items I want and pop it back up. You will also want to avoid any bins and baskets with gaps because you don't want things falling through. Also, if you're interested in these labels I have put on my baskets, let me know as well. In these two baskets, I have all my baking goods. You definitely want to correlate all the items and not have them scattered on different shelves. So if it is your baking section, then you want to keep all your baking powder, food coloring, cake mixes and such together. I keep mine up here because I am not baking that much at the moment. But definitely, if you're a baker at heart, you keep your baking items closer down where you can get to them easily. My mixer, on the other hand, sits in a different area and I will share my baking cart with you very soon. On the right, I have two baskets that house a couple more of my appliances. I have my food processor and blender in one, and that includes all the different additional pieces and blades which you can switch out and the instruction manual as well. The other one just holds my toaster. Also, what I have here are two magazine holders 
which house all my wrapping items such as my cling wrap, my aluminium foil, baking paper and Ziploc bags. I've got these plastic ones from IKEA because they match my baskets and bins perfectly. Again, these containers make it really convenient to just pull down the whole bin when I need it and then just, you know, put it back and it keeps things really neat and organized for me. This brings me to the top and bottom sections of my pantry. All right, so at the very top, I have just kept some of my bulkier items that I'm not using, including appliances, cake stands and containers, my cupcake carrier. I'm also using the large Kugis boxes from IKEA to hold smaller things, just to keep them neat and tidy. And sitting at the very bottom, I am using the same boxes to store much heavier items, like uh, milk cartons, which I use every day, larger bottles of drinks and sodas, cordials, and also larger bottles of oils. All these sort of refill the smaller containers in my kitchens. This box over here holds a lot of stocked items like unopened packets of sugar, rice or flour, and then they just sit there neatly. And just underneath this shelf, I have kept a little stepping stool, which helps me reach the higher shelves. I hope you have taken some ideas back with you on how to organize your pantry. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and do give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video. I will be back with another video in a few days and we will get our homes organized one space, one meal at a time. Till then, happy homemaking!